So, okay, I think we can probably then get started. I hope that everyone can hear me well. Uh, yeah, so first, th thank you everybody for joining the webinar. Um, let me go through some basic things at the very beginning and then we'll get into it. I'll show you the software itself and of course, you know, go through all the kind of points that we are planning to uh, tell here in this webinar. So uh, just kind of as a general overview, uh, this is the agenda that uh, I'm planning to go through today. Uh, the approximate duration of this webinar is approximately one hour that's planned. Um, one thing I'd like to ask you, so please uh, do put all of your questions in the Q&A section, because also we have uh, my colleagues from our support team here, so Irina and Vyacheslav, and so they'll be helping me with uh, handling all the questions. So some of them I'll try to answer live, uh, and some of them my colleagues will answer to you over text. Uh, we already got a few questions about uh, the webinar recording, so the recording of this webinar will be available afterwards. So maybe if you're not able to stick uh, kind of watching this up until the very end, uh, then yeah, then uh, you'll be able to see this later on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, then let's maybe get started with everything. So first, uh, I'm just gonna, I can just tell you a bit about SPH engineering, so a bit of a background about this, about us. Uh, so we are a multi-product drone software company and also a provider of uh, integration services for UAVs. Uh, we have been founded in 2013 in Latvia in uh, EU. Uh, I've been with the company myself since 2014, the end of 2014. Uh, it's been quite a wild ride, so, but now we have uh, quite a lot of different products. So the main one that we're also going to be talking about today, of course, is UGCS, flight planning software for drones. Uh, then also we have our GCS integrated systems. So with this, we have uh, various different sensors that you can use with drones, such as GPRs, magnetometers, and so on. And also we have true terrain following feature there. We also have drone, drone show software. Uh, so if you are interested in maybe making your own drone show uh, company, then this is what you might want to look into. And as the fourth product, we have Atlas. So Atlas is essentially um, product based on machine learning that allows you to process different kinds of data sets uh, so you can uh, process aerial images taken by UAVs. Uh, but yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, EGCS is currently uh, the flagman product of SPH engineering. And we also have quite a wide uh, customer and reseller network in about more than 150 countries worldwide. And uh, over 45% of our partners are currently located in North America. So uh, maybe to start with, I'll just uh, run through some new features in GCS 4.5, which was released actually, I believe, a few days ago. Uh, so uh, the most important changes here are for, uh, essentially, essentially most of them are related to LiDAR. So first one is that now it's possible to uh, start and stop uh, LiDAR recording uh, automatically kind of using an action that you can add in the mission. Also, uh, for DJI Zenmuse L1, we have added now automatic data recording. So as soon as, let's say, you add either a LiDAR survey mission or LiDAR corridor, then the uh, DJI L1 will start uh, gathering the data. We've also added a profile for Hex Drone Tundra drone, as well as added some other improvements in specifically LiDAR calibration. Uh, if you're interested about uh, kind of learning more about this, then you can go to our site, cgcs.com, and then under downloads, we always have uh, the uh, other release notes for each of our new versions that we have have uh, released. Plus, you will also have the newsletter that's also coming out, and I hope that uh, many of you will already receive it. So, okay, I think that now maybe let's uh, jump kind of right into GCS, and let's jump into basically, yeah, working with it. Okay, so I believe now you should be able to see uh, my screen here. So let's maybe start kind of from scratch. So um, I'll imagine that you have no previous knowledge of EGCS. I know that many of you do, but we will also get, of course, into the more complicated topics a bit later. We have quite a lot of ground to cover. Uh, so yeah, I'll try to uh, go through as much as I can today. 
So uh, first off, kind of the first topic on the agenda is connecting your drone. So here it depends on what drone you are using. Uh, most of our customers are using uh, DJI-based drones. So DJI M300, DJI Mavic, uh, M M600, and uh, similar drones. Essentially, to connect these drones to GCS, what you need to do is you also need to download the GCS for DJI application uh, on your Android device. So then the idea is that you connect the Android device to the remote controller of the drone. And then as long as the, uh, our app is open and the Android device is on the same network as the computer, then you will be able to see the drone. So it will appear automatically up here in this kind of section of the screen. So here on our site, let me also maybe just expand this a bit. Yeah, so if you're here, then also we have the download section for GCS for DJI, and you can also get it on Google Play Store. If you're using a drone such as the M300, which has the smart controller, then in that case, you will need to use this direct download option. So you'll just download the APK file, and then you'll put the APK file in the memory of the smart controller and install the app that way. And with some other drones, uh, we also, by the way, have all supported drones here on our site. So for many others, the connection works. Um, maybe for some older drones, you simply have a dedicated data link that you plug into the computer over USB. Um, and yeah, so those are the two main kind of types of connections. And on some drones, we also use Wi-Fi to connect to them. But so now kind of moving on uh, into the flight planning part of this. So to maybe first explain GCS interface a bit to you. So everything is essentially everything that's on the right side of the screen. This is concerning uh, drone control. So you can see here we have uh, two drone models, which are here by default the first time when you open up the GCS. So these are the emulator drones. Uh, below that, we have the telemetry window. And below that, we have our commands that we can send to the drones. And the telemetry window, this can also be expanded if you need to see extended telemetry. And then everything that's here on the left side of the screen, this is concerning the route planning. So up here, this is where you can see what I like to call route cards. And then below this, you have all the flight planning tools that you can use. And now maybe let's uh, start by clearing the screen, making it, it a lot more simple. And then, yeah, we can just get started with a few simple flight planning tools that you can use. And another thing maybe that you should know is that um, we have, for example, here you can see we have three different routes and we have one mission. So the idea is that under one mission, you can have multiple routes. Uh, let's say if you go, for example, somewhere uh, where uh, you, know, you will have multiple flights that you will need to do uh, on, let's say, one day, then after that, uh, all of them will be contained within this one mission, and you'll also be able to export this mission. So, for example, if you need to move the mission or individual routes between computers, then that's not a problem. So, for example, with individual routes, you can go here to parameters and then export route, and this will export this to a JSON file that can then be imported back into GCS. And with missions, it's quite similar. So, you can go here to menu and then export mission. And then again, the whole mission with all of the routes that it contains will be exported. And you'll also be able to move this easily between computers. You'll be able to email this to your colleagues and so on. So now let's maybe go here and let's click on create new mission. So as you can see, now the screen has been uh, cleared. So we don't see any drones, don't see any root cards. Let me hide these notifications just quickly. So now let's maybe add one of our drones. So let's simply add the M copter. And now let's also add a new route. With routes, you can either import them from uh, KML, CSV, or all the exported uh, JSON files from GCS, or you can also create a new route from scratch. In this case, we'll simply create this from scratch. So now we can enter some name for your route, it doesn't matter, but let's, for example, call this route one. And now here you need to choose the profile of the drone that you will be using. Even if you choose an incorrect profile here, then later on, before you do the flight upload, then you'll still be able to, basically GCS will just notify you so that there is a mismatch between the profile in the route and the drone's profile. And that it'll just kind of automatically prompt you that uh, it will select the correct profile for you. 
But in this case, let's maybe select the profile for quad capture emulator. Let's then go next and let's click on OK. So then uh, we are basically, we can basically go anywhere on the map. The map is uh, three dimensional. And then we can start planning our flight. So maybe let's go somewhere over here. And let's get started. So the most simple uh, mission element is the waypoint. So we already have this selected over here. And then we can hold the shift button and click to add waypoints on the map. Also, you can use double clicks. So it's either shift click or double click to add them. Uh, then you can see what parameters each of the waypoints uh, has. So for example, here we have an altitude. You can modify this either by dragging the waypoint or by simply going here and entering an exact altitude, such as let's say 10 meters above ground level. Then the flight speed here is by default set to five meters per second. And this also you can adjust if needed. Uh, turn type, uh, for most drones, you're gonna have two turn types. It's either going to be stop and turn uh, and spline, or it's gonna be stop and turn and adaptive bank turn for most drones. In this case, let's maybe select stop and turn. And so then there are a few more options. There's the option to avoid obstacles and avoid terrain, which normally I suggest that you leave checked. And then there's the altitude mode, which is either AGL or AMSL. Now, one of the topics in this webinar is also planning missions with terrain following. So as long as you have the AGL mode selected, then automatically you will plan your flights uh, with terrain following enabled. Maybe actually let's go to some place where it's uh, where there's a bit more elevation, so it's a bit more interesting for us to plan the flights with terrain following. So let's just zoom out quickly a bit and let's go, let's say to Iceland, somewhere over here. Let's just wait a bit for the map to load. And okay, so now uh, let's maybe try to plan a survey mission for EGCS. So let's add our first waypoint. It's at an altitude of 50 meters, but let's maybe adjust this. So the altitude is, let's say 20 meters. And then after this, um, one of the most common uh, kind of scan types that we are using is simply the area scan. In the area scan, you can customize everything. So you can tell it what should be the exact flight height, what should be the side distance between the survey lines. So now to add the area scan, simply again, hold the shift button and then mark out an area through which you want to fly. Now let's hope that there won't be any warnings here because sometimes, oh, sorry. That was my, my fault, press the escape button. Uh, so basically, um, Let's enter this again. So flight title set 20 meters, side distance, for example, 10 meters. Yep, now enter. Okay, so this seems to be good. And so now what you can see is also that uh, we have this blue arrow here in the middle. So the blue arrow is basically uh, able to adjust, using this, you're able to adjust the direction angle of the survey lines. And so normally we're recommending that this direction angle is set parallel to the longest edge of the survey so that this will essentially um, also maximize the efficiency at which you will fly the missions because there will be less turns. So the less turns, less battery you will waste. Now, let's just, let me just drag this a bit like this. Okay, and so now after this area scan, let's add a waypoint. Usually, usually like to add one waypoint before the area scan and one waypoint after it. Reason being that, let's maybe go here just to demonstrate. So you can currently see that this area scan begins from this point. But now let's say if I take this first waypoint and kind of drag it around like so, you can see how it kind of snaps to the closest corner of the area scan. So basically it's whichever corner it snaps, this is the corner from which the, um, the flight will start, from which uh, yeah, the drone will start flying the survey. So let's maybe uh, try to make sure both waypoints are at the exact same location. 
And okay, so now this is already looking quite good. Um, another thing that you can add if you wish to is that you can add different actions here to the survey or to essentially any element of the route. So you can add a wait action, you can add a point of interest, you can make the drone change the yaw. So for example, if you wanted it to fly throughout this mission uh, facing, let's say, 90 degrees towards the next waypoint, then you can also do this using the yaw action. For example, you can add it like so and then set it, let's say, 90 degrees relative to the next waypoint. Uh, similarly, you can also add set camera mode to make it uh, take a picture or take a video. You can add set camera by time or set camera by distance, or, or also in this case, you can add set servo commands if you want the drone to do some custom commands at each of these points. So yeah, that's basically kind of how you plan an area scan mission. Uh, other things include that if you, uh, for example, now select all elements in the mission using control A, then now you can move the whole mission around. You can also rotate it, rotate it <laughs> if needed. And then uh, let's maybe take a look at now at the elevation profile, because this is quite an interesting thing. So let's then also go back here. Let's go here. Let's again adjust this direction angle. And so now with this route calculated, let's go in here in parameters and then let's go to show elevation. So when you go here, you'll see this elevation profile window. So here you'll basically um, see the most important data about this route. So first you'll see that the total distance uh, covered will be 6.1 kilometers. Then the total duration will be 20 minutes. Waypoint count will be 38. And the minimum and maximum altitudes are also shown over here. Um, yeah, I see we have one question uh, about uh, can you export the mission to KML? And yeah, actually I'm also planning on covering this, but since you asked then yeah. Uh, to export the mission to KML or to export a route, you can go here to parameters. And then if you just go to export route, this will export it to JSON. But so you can see here, we have a separate option that says export to KML. So if you go here, then this window will open up. And so then at the bottom here, you will be able to choose what format you want to GCS to export this route as, and also what you want the altitude of the exported route to be. So there's two options here, either MSL or, or relative to the ground under the first waypoint. And in the format, you can either export it as place marks or as a line string object. Uh, for example, if you one also cool option is that if you want to create a route in UGCS and then use this in the JPilot app, for example, then you can do this. So then you would select this uh, as place mark and then the altitude, make sure to select relative to ground under first waypoint. And then if you export the route like this, then you will be able to import this into DJ Pilot. And also uh, similarly for the Parrot Anafi, also you will be able to export the route from UGCS and then import it into the Anafi controller. Also one quite useful thing, especially if you're maybe working with scanning some larger areas. So let's say you might have um, even like 10 or maybe 20 routes in this area. Um, one important thing is for you to also maybe have some reference to understand, okay, so which routes have you flown, which routes have you not flown? Uh, currently, what I recommend that you can do is that you can go here, select this format as line string, altitude relative to the ground under first waypoint, and then you can export this. So then once this route has been exported, you can go here in map options and map layers, and then go to 2D objects. So then you can add a new source and then basically you'll now import this KML file back in here. So let's add this. Now let's select the source and then press here on upload. Now let's select root one KML. And let's then move this here. So then basically what you can see is that uh, it's basically showing this like white line here on the ground. And so this is a way how you, you are able to tell which areas have you flown, which areas have you not flown. So for example, with each route that you fly, you can simply export this route to KML and then import it back. And so that's how you will be able to tell. Uh, we're also thinking about maybe adding in the future some other way of how making how we could make this even easier for you 
But for now, I think this is also quite a good solution that I think not many people know about. So maybe this is something that you can also take away from this webinar and maybe use in the future. Okay, so this was the area scan, and now maybe let's move into some other surveys, uh, for example, the photogram tree. So with the photogram tree, the main difference will be that for the drone, it's required that you have a camera added. So let's maybe go here to add a new route, and then let's call this photogram tree. And here, I think, uh, as the drone profile, I'll choose the DJI M300 because I know that this profile already has a camera. So maybe now I won't add a waypoint yet. I'll just go here to photogram tree and I'll just start planning already my photogram tree mission. And also the ground resolution. I think for now, I'll just set this as two and then later on, if needed, I will adjust this. You can see that here under camera, we have different camera profiles that you can choose from. And in this case, I have the uh, DJI Zenmuse h uh, 20 t selected. So now again, I'm just going to hold, be holding the shift button and then I can mark out an area. One thing is that by default, GCS has uh, this distance limitation of 500 meters. I think with this route, it's possible that it, we will exceed this. So let's take a look because we might need to go into settings and change this. Yes, so you can see that now we're getting the warning that so this point is a bit too far from the route beginning. Of course, keep in mind, many places there is a restriction that you legally can't really fly further, but I know that in many places there is no such restriction or maybe you have the permit to fly further. So what would you need to do in this case? You can go here into main menu, then to profiles, and then find the drone's profile that you want to use. In this case, it's the DJI M300. Um, sorry, the zoom controls are a bit <laughs> in the way here for me. So uh, now select this profile and then click on edit. So then once you've done that, now just scroll down a bit. And so here you'll see the fence radius. So by default, the fence radius is set to 500 meters. In this case, I'll maybe set this to some larger value. Um, let's maybe set this to, let's say 2000 meters. And the maximum altitude AGL, I think I'll leave this as it is for now. Okay, so now, and by the way, um, one more note is that uh, if your drone maybe doesn't have a camera added here, so then you can do this. So you can go here, press on add, and then you can choose from any of the cameras that we have in GCS by default. I'll now go and save this profile. And uh, another note is that in case your camera is not uh, kind of added by default, then you can go here to payloads and then press here on create new. So then here you can enter any name for the camera. You can select an icon for it and enter all of these parameters, such as uh, true focal length, sensor width and height, and sensor resolutions. Once you do this, then for any of the drone that's uh, in the profile section, you will be able to add uh, the payload and you will be able to plan missions with this specific payload. So now uh, let's go back here to our photogrammetry mission. Let's see if now we'll calculate. Yep, so you can see now that's okay. So the first thing I would usually check here is I would go here to parameters and then show elevation. So then here you can see kind of how long will it take to fly through this area. You can see what's the total distance. And so you can see that this duration, probably it will be um, too much for a single battery set. However, this is also actually one of the features of EGCS because you have the ability to fly with multiple battery sets. So uh, let's just review this. Yeah, this seems to be fine. Um, I think so that, yeah, but I think I'll just maybe show this to you in a bit of a different way. Uh, but yeah, so now we have our photogrammetry mission plan. So let's assume we want to scan this area. I'll just make a few adjustments here just because I see that, for example, you can see kind of how it cuts off here. So what I like to do in these cases, I can just take this point, just drag it out slightly, and then usually this will fix the problem. Yep. And on the other side, I have a bit of a similar story. So also let me just quickly adjust this. I like to have my story lines kind of perfectly uh, rectangular normally. Let's move this back just a notch.
Okay, so this is looking actually quite good. Maybe just some final corrections over here. And so now um, one thing I still like to add to this mission is I like to add the first waypoint uh, because as you can see here, so let's see from which point it would start. So it would start from this furthest point. Uh, so yeah, normally I like to have my drone start the flight from the closest kind of corner. So let's say if you are located, for example, somewhere over here, you would probably want the drone to start the mission from here. So in case you already have created the survey mission, there's an easy way how you can add a first waypoint before it. So we have a specific tool for this that's called add first waypoint. So you can click here and then just a shift click somewhere on the map. Let's maybe adjust the altitude a bit. So let's maybe set this to, let's say 20 meters. And so now you can see that this photogrammetry flight will be started from this point. And then we can use these arrow keys to move between the segments. You can also use uh, your keyboard keys. So these like uh, kind of bracket keys, I'm not sure if there is a different name for them. And yep, so after the photogrammetry mission, uh, I also like to add uh, one waypoint so the drone will come back home automatically. So you can just go here to waypoint and then let's add this over here. And okay, so this is looking good. So now let's go back here to the photogrammetry tool. And so one thing that you can see here is that you now have the set camera by distance action that has been added uh, kind of automatically already to the photogrammetry mission. So in general, there's two uh, main actions that you would want to use here. One is set camera by distance and the other one is set camera by time. Uh, personally, I prefer to using set camera by time. So let's maybe now remove this and then I'll just set the camera by time. And you can see that we have this automatic interval also selected. If you want to, you can also set a specific interval or a specific number of shots or even delay for the first shot, but I just prefer to have it this way. And then additionally, what I like to add is I like to add a camera attitude action with a tilt of 90 degrees. So what this will mean is that even if let's say you forget to move the camera downwards, then if you add this action, then the drone's camera will automatically be moved downwards 90 degrees so it will kind of be pointing uh, straight down. Or let's say if you want to use some different angle, then it's also possible. So then you can just enter a different value in there. So now we have our photogrammetry mission planned. So kind of what are the next steps in this case? Oh, by the way, I think, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll, I will now move this direction angle. I just noticed that it's the wrong way. Somehow didn't really notice that before. And I think, yeah, let's make it a bit like so. But yeah, so essentially now, once you have this mission planned, then you can proceed with uploading it to the drone. So in this case, if we were, let's say, assuming that we have the DJI M300 connected, then it would show up here. So then basically you just need to execute two commands. First, you need to do upload. In this case, if we upload this to the M-Copter, we will probably get an error. Uh, so for that, I will go here and I'll try to change the drone's profile. So here, let's just select the M300, just so we're not getting any errors here. Okay, so now we can go here to upload. And so now you can see you have two options. You, have, you can either start the route from the beginning or you can start the route from a specific waypoint. In this case, we just want to start from the beginning. So now let's click on OK. So now the route has been uploaded. I believe for the M copter, you do need to do this two times just kind of to get the drone at the correct position. And so now, uh, if this was the M300 drone, then you would simply have to go here to uh, auto mode. You press the auto mode, then the drone would arm, take off, and start flying the mission. Since this is the emulator, then I need to manually first arm it. So now I can see that the drone's kind of status will now change to armed. And now I can do auto mode, and then the drone will take off and start flying the mission. Now we can actually, again, go here and review how long will this mission be. So I can see currently the estimated duration for this is uh, 40 minutes. So I was mentioning also before about changing the battery when you're doing these flights. And so, yeah, this can be done. 
uh, using, again, the upload command. So let's assume that your drone has flown, for example, about halfway through the mission. So maybe it stopped, for example, let's say at this point, at waypoint number 18, and that you want to start this route from here. In that case, you know, you would simply re then return the drone back, you change the drone's battery, and then once it reconnects, then what you would do is you again press here on upload, but then instead of selecting start route from the beginning, you would instead select start route from waypoint, and then you would enter the waypoint number from which you want the drone to start the route. In this case, this would be waypoint number 19. And then also, if you wanted the drone to first go to the first waypoint of the mission and then start flying, then uh, you would also check this checkbox. And usually, I like to recommend that you do check this uh, and that the drone first goes to first waypoint, unless it's very far away, and then moves to the specific point from which it should start the flight. So yeah, that's also kind of how would you uh, fly the, uh, the mission with the battery change. So uh, yeah, I think then maybe now let's move further. So we have a few more surveys uh, that, uh, that's possible to use for you in UGCS. Uh, but since we have quite limited time, I'll only run through a few of them and then uh, yeah, show you some other features that we have in, uh, in this webinar agenda plan. So that was the area scan and photogrammetry mission. And so now I think maybe let's go through with the corridor. Uh, scan. So let's go here. Then again, let's create a new route from scratch. Again, let's maybe choose DJI M300. And so uh, another thing that we have here in GCS is the corridor mapping tool. So with this, it's possible to essentially follow uh, any kind of shape. So this could be maybe some power lines, this can be a river or a road. So this is what allows you to make the drone scan some uh, non-straight non uh, area, if, if that makes sense, if that sounds correctly in English. Uh, so yeah, then here you can see this is the corridor mapping tool already here selected. And then similarly, as for the photogrammetry, you would simply need to enter the ground resolution value. Uh, for those who do not know this, so ground resolution value basically uh, is the, it's, it's in centimeters and essentially it means how many centimeters on the ground will be one pixel in the image. Um, it's uh, directly relates to also the altitude. So usually the larger you, the larger the ground resolution parameter, the also higher will the altitude be. But the exact altitude will depend on what drone and what camera are you using. So now let's maybe try to have the drone follow this road. So to do this, we already see we have a few parameters here. So we have the width, we have the flight speed, uh, resolution, as well as overlap values. So then we can basically just start planning. So I'll start adding points. So at this point, I'm just holding the shift button and placing points kind of along the uh, corridor. So maybe let's make it somehow like so. Now let's press on the enter key to complete this. Let's see how long this will be. Hopefully not above our limit. Now it seems that it's okay. So we can now see that uh, at this 30 meter spacing or 30 meter width, uh, it's only sufficient to do this with one line. And if we now mouse over any of these waypoints, we'll also see the exact AGL altitude of them as well as the AMSL altitude. Uh, so now let's maybe try to increase the width just so I can demonstrate how it will also handle multiple lines. Maybe let's change the width to, let's say, 100 meters. And so you can see that now with 100 meters, it will already be two lines. And I think maybe now if we, for example, change this to 200 meters. So yeah, now you can see that this will be four lines and also that the beginning uh, point will be here and the ending point will be here. Let's now also take a look at the uh, elevation profile. And again, so here you can see how the drone will follow the terrain based on what terrain elevation data you have. Uh, we'll get to this in just a moment. And you can see the total estimated duration of this flight is 23 minutes and total distance covered will be seven kilometers.
So yep, that's basically also how you would plan a corridor mapping mission. If you wanted to, you could also add waypoint before and waypoint after this uh, scan. Um, in this case, maybe let's not do this, but one thing is also that you have the forward and the side overlap values. And so then if you wanted to maybe increase this overlap, then you could go here and for example, set the side overlap, let's say to 60% instead. And so now you'll see that instead of having four lines, you'll have five. And maybe let's maybe increase this just a bit more. So yeah, you can see that it's quite customizable. So with any kind of overlap value that you need, you can add this. So basically the side overlap, it will change the spacing between the lines and the forward overlap will change how often will the camera be triggered. So for example, this one also you can change to let's say 80%. And you can see also we're getting one warning so that the camera is not facing down. So for this, let's add a camera attitude action and let's maybe set the tilt to again, let's say 90 degrees. So yep, this is basically how you plan a corridor uh, mission in UGCS. And now let's maybe move into uh, doing some vertical scans. So for this, I'll just again, add a new route over here. So let's go here again, let's choose the M300. So now uh, we did go through a few of the scanning missions. So we did cover area scan and photogrammetry, also uh, the corridor mapping. So now maybe let's take a look at the facade scan tool. So the facade scan can be used for various different purposes. Um, it can be used for taking pictures of the uh, facades of buildings or it can be used for some other virtual scanning purposes, such as maybe inspecting the faces of uh, dams or yeah, doing something uh, similar. So now to do this, you can see where well, you have these parameters here. So again, it's uh, going to be uh, kind of planning this flight based on what camera you have chosen and what overlap values you have. You can see that the minimum height currently is set to 30 meters. So maybe now let's change this to, for example, 10 meters. And let's change the maximum height to, for example, 60. So now let's already add this. So again, I'm just holding the shift button and let's maybe just add kind of a square like so. If we want, so we can modify this a bit. Also, if you want to add some uh, other kind of points here in the middle, you can click here and just basically move this out. And so this is essentially how you can add more points in the facade scan. Of course, here, there is nothing really in the middle, but what you can do is you can also import uh, buildings as KMZ files or simply kind of plan based on the map that you have. So you can see that currently the pattern we're using is the vertical pattern and you can change this in here and you can also select the horizontal pattern instead. And usually, at least for this type of mission, this should make this a bit faster. Again, you can see we have the set camera by distance action and we have the set camera attitude action where it sets the tilt to zero degrees. So it's facing the facade. And if you want, you can of course also set this to maybe move the camera a bit lower if that's needed. And yep, so I hope that this is also kind of understandable. So how you can use this tool, let's also maybe now take a look at the elevation profile. And you can see that, for example, in this mission, the estimated duration will be eight minutes and distance covered will be 4.2 kilometers. Oh yeah, so there's a question. Uh, so what happens when the DJI drone returns home when the battery gets low? So for this, maybe let's also try to answer this question live. So here, one important kind of parameter uh, is if you go here to root parameters, so just press here and then uh, go to parameters, you have this return home altitude above takeoff point. So uh, it also depends on kind of where you are flying. If you're flying in quite a flat surface, um, then you can also, for example, you know, set some specific return home altitude. However, if you're flying specifically in the mountains, then I would recommend that you would either set this at quite a, a high um, level, or you would set this as a do not modify. So maybe now let me explain a bit more detail. Uh, one more thing is that you can see that now this photogrammetry mission is locked. So uh, when you upload any route the first time to a drone, then it will kind of automatically get locked. 
and prevent you from modifying it. If you want to make some changes, then you can click here on unlock root and then you will be able to make your changes. So for example, here we can see that the highest point will be actually here at the very beginning and also this is shown here as the maximum altitude. So this will be the maximum altitude at which we will fly. And actually I would recommend so that we set this uh, right here. Yeah, so MSL will be five, four, five. And so then this would be kind of, you need, need, need to take a, take a look at what's the altitude at the takeoff level. So here you can see that turn elevation is 318 meters. And so then at this highest point, you can see, so what's the change? And so then essentially in the parameters, you need to kind of take into account this difference uh, of uh, how much is it? So 170 meters um, plus, let's say some 20 meters above ground level. So that's what you would set as the return home altitude. So yeah, always when you're flying in the mountains, you have to be a bit more careful with what you are setting there. So that's one thing you can also set this do, do not modify. So it will use the vehicle's defaults. And similarly, uh, you can set what should the drone do on the event of loss of RC. So for example, you can set this to either return home to continue the mission or to do, do not modify. So again, this will use the vehicle defaults that are already set. Yep, so this was uh, essentially flight planning with uh, kind of our most popular tools. And so now maybe let's move into, uh, or at least we already kind of uh, 40 minutes in. So maybe now let's, uh, I'll just quickly show to you how you can also actually customize the map and customize the elevation in UGCS. So to do this, you can go here into map options and then map layers. So in this window, you can see you have different sections here at the top. Maybe now let's focus here on the map section. So you can see currently we have a certain base map. So currently we have Bing. By default, I believe we have Google Satellite, or no, sorry, we have Google Hybrid by default. So you can change the base layer quite easily simply by selecting which one you want to use and then pressing on the arrow to uh, choose this base layer. Additionally, you also have the overlay layer that you can add. So by default, this will be empty. But what you can do is you can uh, plan a flight in GCS. Uh, let's say a photogrammetry mission, you have the drone take the images. Also, we have our, another tool that's called GCS Mapper. So I'll just quickly put this here on the screen. Later on, uh, it's also available from our website. So you can use this to quickly uh, create maps of some areas. It's quite simple to work with. Uh, first, you just select the folder where you have your images. Then you select the output directory and then you press on process. Uh, here, let's see, maybe if I now have this available. Yes, so this is over here. And uh, so now I'll just maybe show to you the uh, kind of report of this photogrammetry flight. So this is the report generated by Mapper. So here you can see this is the map that was created. These are the images that were used. In total, there are 261, there's 261 image. And also Mapper will attempt to also reconstruct a uh, 3D elevation model. So now um, once you process the images in Mapper, you'll be able to kind of automatically select here. You can see there's a button publish. And so then this will already import this into UGCS. So now let's maybe take this away a bit. So once you press on publish, so this will be automatically imported in the geo server. And so then here in the map section, you can simply press here to set this as the overlay layer. And then you can press here on focus. So then you'll be taken to the place on the map where you have uh, this uh, map imported. And by the way, it's also a simple way how you can, there's a simple way how you can quickly move in the map. So if you either double click here, let's say on a specific route, or if you double click on a vehicle, then this will kind of focus in on that. So it's a very quick way how you can jump between different parts on the map. But kind of going back to where we were, if you go here and then focus in on this, let's say a photogrammetry uh, mission, or sorry, the photogrammetry area that was done. So if we now zoom in, you'll be able to see basically the uh, difference in the level of detail. Of course, what you have with the default map and what you have with the map that you have created yourself. Uh, you can use uh, maps essentially imported from any other uh, source as well. And in this case, we're using maps in a GeoTIF format, so .tif. And so you can use this for maps as well as for terrain elevation. I know that in many places, especially in some mountainous areas, 
the default elevation is not really too accurate. So um, by default here in GCS, we are using uh, SRTM uh, for elevation data, but you can also import your own terrain elevation. You can get this either from public sources or maybe if you have this yourself, then you can also use this. And so then you'll be able to fly more accurate terrain following missions using this uh, data. So uh, yeah, so now I can see how it looks like when you have the, um, the map imported. And also this is one thing, some of the topics of this webinar is also how um, you can essentially use UGCS in offline mode. Uh, so since we're kind of on the topic of maps, I'll also maybe kind of demonstrate this to you. So first is that you can go here, anywhere, basically where you are in the map. Let's say you do know that you will need to fly in this location when you are offline. And so then you just right click and then you select offline map. And so then what ha will happen will be that GCS will automatically download the map in the radius of one kilometer around this point. And so then when you go there, you will have the map available for you. Uh, another thing is that, uh, yeah, you can of course have your own maps and elevation data imported. And so then when you'll be planning these missions, you will have this map available. Uh, for example, when we were in the expedition in Greenland in 2019, then also, of course, we didn't really have this, uh, we didn't really have any internet coverage since we were in quite a remote area. And so then what we simply did, we, um, we just kind of put a GoPro camera on one of our M600 drones. We flew for the Gram Tree mission with it, processed the data using Mapper, imported it here into GCS, and then we were able to fly. Because at, at least in that case, even the uh, map data that we kind of got additionally, uh, it just wasn't really accurate enough. So we simply had to make our own and use this. And I think this is a really good option that you uh, should take advantage of. And yeah, then to import the elevation, this also showed to you. So yeah, basically it's quite a similar process here. You just uh, press here on add, you add your uh, map source or elevation source, then select upload and then simply select this uh, GeoTIFF file. And that's, you can then add this as the overlay. Okay, so now let's see what's kind of, what would be next more topics. Let's just make sure I haven't really forgotten anything. I know you have a lot of questions as well. Um, I'll try to answer some of them, but probably we will not have enough time for all of them, I'm afraid. But you'll, later on, you'll still be able to reach out to us, to our support team, so we can get all of them answered. Um, yep, then regarding also, we have some points about route management. So um, maybe I'll just quickly also uh, touch upon this. So on any of the route, what you can do is that there are a few actions on kind of how you can basically control them or you know manipulate with them. Uh, first, any route that you have in GCS, you can uh, kind of transform this route to waypoints. So let's say if you have, for example, for the Gram Tree mission and that you need to maybe uh, fly around some obstacle here in the middle, then what you can do is you can go here and then select route to waypoints. And then you'll basically have a copy of this uh, original route you can then use the hide route to hide the original one. And so then this is now kind of the, the new one. And so then, for example, if you wanted to move one of the lines, let's say a bit to the side, then what you can do is you can uh, select these waypoints. So let's, for example, select this one. So this would be, sorry, I wasn't controlling, holding the control key. Yeah, so these would be these. And so now with these selected, you can kind of simply move them, let's say a bit to the side. This is more when you're flying at lower altitude, but yes, yeah, so this is still kind of how you can even make some modifications to let's say area scan missions, uh, which kind of can be modified uh, in this detail uh, by themselves. So then you can use this option to transform this to waypoints and then make these changes. Additionally, you can also, also have the options to split routes uh, by segments. So if you go here, then you'll see you have the option to split routes either by certain segments or by certain points. You can also split them by distance as well. And similarly, you also have the option to merge routes together. So if you, for example, have two routes that you want to combine, then also you can use this and yeah, combine the routes back. And then so the export options we did already cover. Oh, so uh, there's one question. So how, how can we add the waypoint to an existing segment of the route? Uh, so this is, I'll just maybe also explain this because it's, I believe, quite quick. So if you want to add a waypoint somewhere, so let's say you are, uh, for example, let's 
zoom in. So let's say you're somewhere here and you want, just want to add additional waypoints. So wherever you are currently in the mission, you can use these arrows to kind of move through it. So let's maybe go over here. So this is currently the waypoint that we have selected. And so now uh, if you add a new segment in the mission, doesn't matter what segment you're adding, this will be added in this case between the 16th and the 17th uh, segment. So now if we add another waypoint using again, the shift click, so then we can simply add them like so. I can use this with any elements of the mission. Um, if you wanted to also have, for example, the circle segments, if you wanted to add a circle, let's say in the middle of the, uh, here in the middle, then also you can do this. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. So yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, there's a question also about LiDAR and trend following. Uh, so yeah, we do support LiDAR uh, and this was added quite recently to GCS. Uh, so in addition to normal uh, photogrammetry tool and area scan, we also have the LiDAR area scan. So here in the LiDAR area scan, also similarly how it works for area scan and photogrammetry, it also will follow the terrain. So uh, when you plan the flight, let's maybe set some field of view here. And then let's also select some area. Yep, so now you can see we have the LiDAR area added, uh, although I probably should have added this uh, kind of as a separate route. Uh, but yeah, still, you can see if I now go to show elevation, so this will also basically be part of it. So um, actually by default, uh, all routes that you create in UGCS will have terrain following in them. Uh, if you don't want terrain following, what you would need to do is you would go here to altitude mode and then change this to AMSL. But in, in most cases, uh, our customers are choosing to use terrain following. Um, yeah, there's a question about CSV import as well. So can you briefly show this? Um, I'm, I don't really have a CSV file that I can show you as an example, but uh, I can show you how would you import a, a file like that. So you simply, you would go here to add new root and then under import from file, you would simply then select the CSV file over here. In CSV file, basically you would need to have the altitude, uh, latitude and longitude. And so using these values, you will be able to import this into GCS. Uh, by the way, we also have our uh, wiki uh, which you can access from our site. And then on this also, we have a lot of information on this. Okay, let's see what other questions we have and what else can we cover? So offline we did cover uh, custom maps and elevation models as well, um, route management as well. Well, I, I believe we actually have covered most of the items. So let's maybe quickly, I'll just reopen the, uh, let's see where it is. You open the presentation. Okay, uh, yeah, so kind of moving onwards, uh, one thing I just want to mention is that um, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can, but if we don't have question, maybe the time to answer your question, uh, then please, or maybe you have some trouble, something that isn't really working for you, uh, please do send us an email to support at gcs.com. So we're always trying to, you know, help our users uh, and yeah, get you through any kind of problems that you might have. So yeah, just send an email to our support team and we'll get on it and try to provide you with answers. Uh, but yeah, speaking of answers, uh, I think it's time maybe for our Q&A session. So I'll also probably sh uh, share GCS screen again, uh, just in a moment. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just now go through the questions and see uh, what can I show you. Uh, yeah, one question was about, so can you do a LiDAR mission as an example with the calibration pattern? Um, since I don't have a real drone now connected, unfortunately, the calibration pattern will only be available when you have a real drone kind of added there. Uh, so yeah, the calibration tools will be available uh, when you, for example, have the M300 connected to GCS. Uh, what you can do is that also on any DJI drone that you can connect, uh, there's an option to enable the simulator mode. So if you want to maybe test how some flight will perform, then you can uh, start the simulator mode and 
Yep, then you can simply apply any mission created into GCS. Oh yeah, so uh, there's also, there's one question that we have had uh, for, for quite a while uh, from many of our customers, I think. Uh, so this is, so how you can like synchronize missions. So let's say if you plan a mission on the PC and then maybe you want to use this on the laptop in the field. So is there some ability to sync them? Um, there, let me maybe show you GCS screen here for you. I'm sorry. So um, answer is like this. So currently there is no way to automatically synchronize them. However, uh, what you can do, uh, for example, if you have this mission that you want to use, you can then go here and then you can uh, go to export. So then this mission will be exported to a JSON file. So maybe let's go here. And so now if we simply press here on save. So now this has been saved as a JSON file. So now let's go here to where we have our test data. And so you can see this is now the JSON file of the mission. Uh, so I now save this over here, but what you can do is you can simply set up some shared folder on your computer. So this can be Dropbox, this can be uh, you know, Microsoft OneDrive and anything that you prefer. And so when you save this JSON file over there, of course it will synchronize with the other computer. And so then what you would do on the other PC in the field, you would go here and then simply, uh, oh, sorry, not export mission, but then you would go to import mission instead. So you would then go here and then simply select the mission that you want to import into GCS, select it, and then it will be imported uh, here and you will be able to use this. Uh, we have also uh, at least some ideas, some plans of making it so that there will be some either automatic sync or uh, one thing also that we are working with, uh, working on is that, um, so currently when you upload any mission to your drone, this route will be saved on the smart controller. So then, uh, for example, if you are in the office and then let's say you upload a few routes to your drone, so then these will be saved over there. Uh, one idea that we have that we uh, want to add to GCS is that um, you will be able to export a mission uh, or a route from GCS, and then you will be able to kind of open it up straight from the Android device. There will be no need to even have the drone turned on. You simply transfer the files there, and then when you're in the field, just select them upload it to the drone and go and fly. And there's you know, no, no need to even open up the laptop. It's a good idea to have it with you, but uh, in this case, you can simply only use the Android device. And yeah, if there's no need to modify the route, then you should be good. So uh, let me see. Yeah, again, we just want one thing. Uh, if you have some like the questions, please do put them in the Q&A section and not the chat. So make sure that any, any questions that you have, do put them in the uh, Q&A. So, okay, uh, let's see. Um, Christoph? Yes. Um, I brought your attention to a few more questions which were uh, asked to answer live. The one of them is, um, can you please show how and why you need to add a starting and ending waypoint? Uh, yes, sure. I think I, I did, however, uh, cover this, uh, but yeah, we can maybe, uh, let's just quickly go through this again. So let me now let's let's hide actually these other routes so they're not in our way. So let's do this and this and so now also where we have the two D objects, let's maybe go here and hide the KML. So now we only are kind of left with this area scan tool. So now let's go here. So um, question: uh, Why you need to add the start? Why you need to add the starting and an ending waypoint? So now uh, we have actually both of them. So now we have, let's maybe select the first waypoint first. And so now you can see as I'm moving the waypoint kind of uh, through these corners, it snaps the closest corner. And let's say if we just leave it here, you'll see that now the survey mission will start from this corner. And uh, also if you move it over here, then it will start from this corner. And so basically this is why you want to add the first waypoint to the mission. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. Either you first add the waypoint and you then plan the survey mission, or let's maybe now I'll just delete the, the waypoint. Let's maybe delete the last one as well. So if you maybe just plan the survey flight and then you just want to add a waypoint uh, before it, you can simply use this add first waypoint tool and then just shift click somewhere on the map, enter an altitude for this waypoint. 
And so now, uh, yeah, you can see that the journal basically start flying the mission from wherever you have the point. Um, oftentimes also when you already have the drone turned on and shown in the GCS, then I would kind of place the waypoint exactly where the drone is. Um, sometimes when you see that the flight has been planned so that the first point will be, you know, quite close to where the drone is, you don't really need to add it, but it's something that I just prefer to add. And I also recommend that you add the first waypoint here as well, just so the drone will start the flight from the closest mm -hmm. corner. And uh, then about the last point, uh, well, it's not really needed. Uh, it's something that I personally also prefer to do. So I just like to have it so that the drone will return back uh, on its own. Uh, of course, if you don't add the last point, then simply the drone, when it finishes the flight, it will kind of stay here at this last point and hover and wait for your command. But yeah, I just prefer to kind of have this added here. So then uh, this basically allows you to uh, also where you have the action and loss of RC, you can, for example, set this to continue so that even in the event that you lose RC connection to the drone, you can simply, uh, you know, just wait a bit and then the drone will most likely kind of come back home on its own. Okay, so let's now go through some other questions. Yeah, we'll also have questions about, uh, can you do like a figure eight prior to, let's say a LiDAR flight? Uh, we are also working on this. So we're planning that you will be able to add the calibration pattern before the uh, LiDAR uh, mission. So this will be done uh, already automatically before the drone will go on the full flight. So without questions, we have time to answer. Probably one more for a live answer is about, can UGCS be installed on, on M300 smart controller or do I need an additional tablet? Oh, yep. Uh, so absolutely, yeah, you can install this on the uh, smart controller. So like I was explaining a moment ago, uh, let's open up here. So to install this on the M300 uh, smart controller, yeah, you don't need to have any other device. It's just sufficient to have the smart controller. You just go here to our site where you have the download GCS for DJI. And then instead of kind of clicking here and get it from Google Play, you can simply uh, go here for a direct download. And so once you do this, you'll just be able to download the APK file. And so then this APK file, you will put in the memory of the smart controller and then just install it. Uh, we also have a lot of videos on our YouTube. So our YouTube channel is called GCS TV. Uh, and also, I think we should have this on our wiki. Let's uh, let me go here and check. But uh, yeah, I think also for the M300, uh, this should be on here. If I will, will be able to kind of find this uh, quickly. For example, here we have this for uh, DJ Crystal Sky and the procedure is quite similar as well. So yeah, you would simply uh, download the APK file, put it on the uh, smart controller and then install it. Okay, uh, I'm just now looking what other questions do we have time to answer? Because there's quite a lot of them. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going to get to your question. But then after that, we'll still try to, you know, answer all of them. And uh, I think we'll also probably, yeah, so like I said, the recording also will be available. So we'll also send you the YouTube link to it. So you'll be able to review this. Okay, so a uh, question from Mark was, so uh, is, is DJI software in charge or is this software? Um, so essentially you can choose to, you know, either use DJI or use UGCS. In this case, what we're presenting is a different solution. So yeah, you would use UGCS and uh, UGCS for DJI on Android. So maybe the confusion was kind of which app would you use uh, on the mobile device, if I understand this correctly. Uh, but so yeah, you would use uh, our Android application and you would use our app here on desktop. Let's see what else, if we have some questions that we can answer. Yep. Uh, if you have some more like detailed questions that you want us to answer, maybe something that you didn't get an answer to in this webinar, because uh, keep in mind, this webinar is uh, essentially for a lot of new users who are just kind of just getting started. If you have something more specific that you want us to answer, then please do send a question to support at the GCS uh, so that we can investigate and then provide you with a detailed answer to uh, the issue that you're facing.
Oh, yeah, so again, question from Mark. So does your software can override the uh, return home? So yes, the question, the answer is that uh, if here in the root parameters, if here you have, let's say, an action loss of RC, if it's set to return home, uh, or sorry, if it's set, let's say, continue instead of modify, then yes, it will override the default value that's there uh, by DJI. Oh yeah, another, another question is, so what are the um, like starting points and uh, landing points for? Uh, so maybe let me also try to answer this. Uh, so for those of you who know, yeah, we also have the takeoff point and we have the landing point. Uh, so if you want to, then at the end of the mission, yes, you can add the landing point to have the drone land uh, automatically. Personally, I prefer to still land the drone manually uh, each time, but if you want to, then yes, you can add an automatic landing point as well. And so then once the drone returns back, it will also land by itself. Uh, as far as takeoff goes for DJI drones, it's not really necessary to add a, a specific takeoff point. This is more intended for some other drones, such as those based on Pixhawk or Artpilot. So for these, sometimes you might need to have the takeoff points. Um, but yeah, hope that answers your question. But yeah, I think uh, we have uh, covered quite a lot of ground here. Um, like I said, if uh, you still have some questions after this, uh, please do write to us at support at gcs.com. Let's maybe open up again the uh, presentation here. Yep, so I think um, since we're already you know, over our one hour mark and also did answer a lot of your questions, then I think uh, I'll just say thank you for listening to this webinar. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, yep, yeah, like I said, if you have anything else, then just send an email to support. Uh, if you want to contact me directly, I also put my contact over here. So this is my email. So also feel free to reach out after the webinar. Um, and yep, yeah, the webinar recording also will be published, will be available for you to review later, or maybe to show to some of your colleagues if let's say they didn't have time to watch this. But yep, yeah, then uh, thank you everybody. Thank you for joining and yeah, hope to see you in future webinars.